Uh, I greet you all in the name of Jesus. Uh, today, I, 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 I just get this time to contend for something which is happening in South Africa. I've been getting so many questions about a certain gentleman called Enigma. And uh, this guy is talking about his visitations. He is talking about his dreams, his visions. God talking to him. And he is talking about very strange and funny stuff. I should call it funny. Now, he has garnered a lot of followers. Now, the trend with something which is very dodgy and fishy is that when it comes spontaneously like that, it garners followers. Now, I am not going to be like attacking this guy. Neither am I attacking his followers. But I just want to measure what he talks about under the matrix of the word of God. You see, we, we, have, we, we have an answer to everything pretending or claiming to be from God. When a man says, I am from God, because of what the word says, we can measure, we have a ruler to measure what a man says based on the word of God. Now to all of you followers of this guy called Enigma, what I want you to do, I want to invite you to a Bible research lesson. And how am I going to do it? I am going to do it based on what he is saying and what the word of God says. So I am not here to attack you, guys. I want to make a disclaimer. Some of you guys are genuine. And you know that there is heaven and hell as this man is trying to come to you preaching. But now, how do we know that his message is credible? Authentic. When a man says, I am sent by God, his message must be in line with the word of God. If it is not in line with the word of God, it is not from God. So what I want to do now, I am going to play a very small clip and then I'm going to analyze it. And then I'm going to read from scripture. And then I'll, go, I'll show you what scripture says and what he says. Now, a brother from Mpumalanga in South Africa sent me this clip. He said, what do you think of this gentleman called uh, uh, Enigma? One minute. And then when he said, what do you think of this gentleman called Enigma? Can you please highlight to me what you think this guy is saying? And then I said, okay, he sent me a video. And then it is this video which I'm going to play. And then the rest, I'll take it from there. Let's go. So just one minute, I want you just to play the video. And then we will take it from there. One minute, it will be ready. Okay, just be patient with me. I'll be done in a minute. So I just want you to understand that everything I am going to do, I'm going to use the matrix of the word of God. I'm not going to judge him based on what I think, but I will allow you to open it. As I am doing this, may I ask every follower of Enigma to take your own Bible. And I am going to read and we are going to know the truth. Because no man must cheat us. I'm there. I am there. All I need to do now is to put volume. Good. So now, listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. 
every Tuesday we just eat the Giannis because you've got to support local. It's about your anointing or your gift. Listen to this. It's about obedience and righteousness. My name is Enigma. Okay. Yes. Did you hear that? He says, My name is Enigma. Now, I am one of those guys who researches and takes everything I see and hear seriously. What is the meaning of the word enigma? Dictionary meaning of the word enigma. If you Google enigma meaning, what you find is enigma is someone or something which is hard to understand. I repeat the meaning of the word enigma, his name. This man calls himself brother enigma. What is the meaning of the word enigma? Let me Google it and show you from the Google definition. Google meaning of enigma. Enigma meaning. Meaning. A person or a thing that is mysterious or difficult to understand. I know most people don't understand this guy. But thank God, with the word of God in our lives, we can understand him. I have got the word of God which I am going to read today for us to understand. So now he calls himself Enigma. And he says, he has been sent by God. So now you should think that when a man claims that he has been sent by God, his words must match this word. It doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter what your pastor says. It doesn't matter whoever says what. If they claim to be coming from God, their word must be in harmony with the word of God. The matrix of the word of God. So now you heard Enigma saying, my name is Enigma. Let me just rewind him one minute and then, and then I tell Okay. Anything or your gift is it's about obedience and righteousness. My name is Enigma. His name is Jesus. Is the so did you hear that? He says his name is Enigma and his name is Jesus. So Enigma, brother Enigma, we will call him, claims to have been sent by Jesus. Which Jesus? Listen from his own mouth. Not my mouth. His own mouth. Listen to this. One who sent me. So I always read the Bible in the book of Colossians chapter 1. It seems like verse 11. That the one who sent me is not a man. It's God himself, the one who sent me. So he is the one who created or caused the confusion that is in South Africa now. I know you did not hear it properly. He says his name is Enigma and the one who sent him is Jesus. He is the one who caused all the confusion that is in South Africa. He's God. So Enigma's God is the one who caused the confusion that is in South Africa. I want to repeat those words so that you don't say I'm the one who said them. Let him say the words himself. Listen to this. I will rewind again. Listen. So I always read the Bible in the book of Colossians chapter 1. It seems like verse 11. That the one who sent me is not a man. It's God himself, the one who sent me. So he is the one who created or caused the confusion that is in South Africa now. Okay. What did he say? He said his name was Enigma. And he saves a Jesus. And this Jesus is the one which caused the confusion that is in South Africa. You heard it from his own mouth. 
Now, I am not here to fight his followers. I am not here to fight him. I am not here to attack his followers. But I just want to help somebody to get to the bottom of the truth. Now, if this gentleman enigma is saying, is Jesus is the one which is causing the confusion that is in South Africa. I agree with him because that is not the Jesus of the Bible. I will read from the scriptures about the Jesus of the Bible and confusion. You listen. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 33. The Jesus of the Bible does not cause confusion. But the Jesus of Enigma has caused confusion in South Africa. And I agree with him because the Jesus of Enigma is not the Jesus of the Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. I'll read. Listen to this. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion but of peace and as in all the churches of the saints so now the God or the Jesus of the Bible does not cause confusion in a country he wants peace Paul writing to Timothy, he says, Timothy, I pray that I, I instruct you that first of all, prayers be made for all men everywhere so that there can be peace in the world. So Christians, we are entreated to pray for peace. Now, how can we pray to a God who causes confusion? One point. This is Enigma's God. I will rewind him and I want you to listen to him saying his God is the one who causes confusion. As simple as that. Listen to that. Listen. So I always read the Bible in the book of Colossians chapter 1. It says, Colossians or Galatians chapter 1 as he says, there is no such a verse which he is talking about. Listen. It's like verse 11. That the one who sent me is not a That's man. not what that verse is. It's God himself, the one who sent me. So he is the one who created or caused the confusion that is in South Africa now. Who? The Lord Jesus is the one. So did By you hear me? Did you hear him? He stressed it. That it is Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ who caused the confusion in South Africa. I have read 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 33 which says God is not the author of confusion. Now, do you believe in the Bible or you believe in this man? The choice is yours. My deduction and my belief is that this man is lost. God does not cause confusion. God causes peace and order. God who causes confusion is Satan and his demons. The Bible says Satan comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That is confusion, not the God of the Bible. So now, for some of you who are believing in this man, you must repent. I see so many people are prepared to fight for this man. Why? It is the nature of every deceiver and every antichrist spirit which comes along to raise people who are very, very aggressive. If you look at followers of every false preacher, they are very aggressive. Now the same thing with the followers of this guy called Enigma. Let's continue. I speak his message and I mention his name. The Lord Jesus. So he, he is also lifting up my name. That's why South Africa is shaken by enigma. So did you hear that? 
His God is lifting up the name of Enigma. Where in the Bible did we see God lifting up the name of a man? Show me from scripture where God lifted or exalted the name of Moses, exalted the name of Paul, exalted the name of Peter. As this man is claiming. Let's continue. And when I speak, he always touches my tongue. So that when I mention the names of members of parliament, I told you last time, because they are human beings. They are not members of parliament to him. Mm -hmm. He's calling them by their names. I hold him there. He says one, his God is the God which causes confusion in South Africa. It's not true. God is not the author of confusion. That's Corinthians chapter 14 verse 33. I want now to rewind him and go to nine minutes. You know what I, I'm doing? I've taken some small clips. This is part one. For all you followers of Enigma, relax. In South Africa, we say, relax. Come down, guys. And as you come down, buy Bibles. And we are going to take it bit by bit from Scripture. We are not going to run. We are just going to show each other what Scripture says. Now, I know there has been so many controversies about this guy and if people say he's right, he's wrong. Now, let the book speak. I will go to nine minutes. Listen to that. 9.20, if I'm not mistaken, yes. I go to 9.20. I want you to listen. Listen to this. So they want to take to use my pictures and myself in their kingdom. So I want to talk about the marine kingdom because people do not believe that there's a world under the water. Mm -hmm. There's a world under the water. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what I'm going to do, I'm not going to rush as I'm saying. He says he is going to talk about the marine kingdom. He says there is a world under the water. Really? Where do we find that world? He knows it. Let's continue. It is amazing that uh, in that world, in the marine kingdom, Atlantic Ocean, it's amazing when you look up here, up like, you see the water. It's like the cloud. Just stood up there like a cloud. People are walking down here. There are streets, there are cars, Lamborghini, Ferraris, more cars, mm. racist cars. And nice big houses made the same like houses in heaven. Because those houses in the marine kingdom are created by the fallen angels. So they designed... Did you hear that? 9.20. Rewind. He says, in the Atlantic Ocean, there are marine spirits which have created beautiful houses. There are marine spirits which have created Lamborghinis. There are marine spirits which have created so many beautiful things. That is weird. Let's continue. I'll, I have rewinded. Listen. Uh -huh. Hey, like this. You want to take a picture with me? Okay. So they want to take my pictures and myself in their kingdom. So I want to talk about the marine kingdom because people do not believe that there's a world under the world. Mm -hmm. There's a world under the water mm -hmm. and it is amazing that uh, in that world in the marine kingdom atlantic ocean okay question all you followers of enigma show me from the scripture where the bible says there is a world underwater where there are cars or there is activity oh they are houses. Show me. 
Do you know we are dealing with spirit, demons, evil spirits, or as he calls the marine spirits? What does the Bible say about these spirits? I will take you to Ephesians chapter 6. We are dealing with the word of God, not what comes from the mind of a human being. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Let me use the phone so that it becomes faster. Listen to this. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Ephesians 6, 10. Let me just put it to King James Version. Ephesians 6, verse 10. KJV. Let's read Let me just say Ephesians 6 so that it comes out properly. KJV, we got the whole chapter, not one verse. Oh dear me, what's happening? Ephesians chapter 6. Okay, let me just go to my Bible. It's, it comes easy. I don't know, maybe it's my network. Ephesians 6. Listen to this. Verse 10. Finally, my brothers, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the tactics of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, not in the water. So now all you enigma followers, can someone show me from the scriptures where it says in the waters there are spirits? We have seen that spirits we are wrestling with, Ephesians 6 verse 13, they are in high places. Now, where in the Bible does it say there are spirits in the waters which we are fighting with? Now, I wrote a verse. It's First Corinthians chapter. Okay, I, I'm not going to go there. Let me just ask a question and say, where in the Bible does it say in the waters there are spirits which are building houses? There are spirits which are building cars. You know what this guy is saying? He is giving Satan powers and demons which they don't have. Demons and spirits, marine spirits, so-called marine spirits, can not build a car because they don't have bodies. Now he can say maybe it's a figure of speech. Even if it's a figure of speech, it doesn't make any sense Compa concerning what he's going to say. Let's continue. Listen to what he's going to say. Listen. It's amazing when you look up here, up like, you see the water. It's like the cloud. Just stood up there like a cloud. People are walking down here. There are streets, there are cars, Lamborghini, Ferrari, small cars. Mm. That's this not cars. impossible. That's and a lie. Nice big houses made the same like houses in heaven. Because those houses in the marine kingdom are created by the fallen angels. So they design. Listen. He is saying houses in the seas are created by fallen angels or demons. Jesus said demons don't have flesh and blood. They don't marry. They are spirits. They don't construct anything. So this guy is lying. There is no such a thing as demons making cars. If you believe that a demon can make a car, then you have been deceived to the last degree. 
Because it's impossible for something without a body to make a car. Let's continue. The design of heaven. There's a world in the marine kingdom. People must know that. And there's a place in the marine kingdom, there's a section whereby they kept people. Children, young boys, young girls, and old people. Mm. Who are those people? These people are dead. We Listen. If you believe this rubbish which this man has said, automatically it means that you don't believe the word of God. The Bible says, it is appointed unto men to die once after that judgment to come. Now this man is saying there are people who have died and we have not died. What nonsense is that? L let, me, let me rewind him so that you understand this context. Listen. In the design of heaven, there's a world in the marine kingdom, people must know that. And there's a place in the marine kingdom, there's a section whereby they kept people. Children, young boys, young girls, and old people. Mm. Who are those people? These people are dead. We buried them in the world. But in the Atlantic Ocean, they are still alive. Why? Because there are people in this world who have businesses, others are celebrities, they are famous. They went to the witch doctor for power. And then they were given multi, wash yourself with this, or kill an animal, or kill a chicken, drink the blood and do this, then you... So the sacrifices. Reach. Yeah, the sacrifices. Mm. Now, Can I put it this way? Yes, it is true that there are people of this world who will make covenants with Satan. It's true. To get rich. It's true. But it's not true that there are people who are dead and they're in water and they've not died. It's not in the Bible. Jesus was tempted by the devil. The devil said to Jesus, if you worship me, you bow down, I'm going to give you the riches of this world. Yes, it's true that Satan can make covenants with the rich people. But to say there are people who have died who are in water is not true. It's not true because it's not in the Bible. There is nothing a man can claim to know which is not documented in the scriptures. So he is lying when he says there are young children, there are young people, there are people who are dead and they are in waters in the Atlantic Ocean and they are being held by marine spirits. That is not true. Let us continue. When the time goes, maybe after a year, a member of your family dies. Mm -hmm. Another year, a member of a family dies. So those people are kept in the marine kingdom. And here the in the world, died. who died in those families of these people who are? Sure. Mm -hmm. So I want you people to know that if you go to the funeral, don't always eat what you don't understand. You eat the food, you eat the meat of a cow that has been slaughtered there. Okay. And Did you hear that? He says... These spirits, marine spirits, they are so powerful to the extent that meat which has been offered to them is dangerous. Now, when you want to catch somebody in their game, read this book. You see, people, the reason why false preachers deceive people is that people don't read the Bible for themselves. What does the Bible say about meat or meats offered to idols? We are going to read. What does he say? He says, if you go to a funeral, do not eat the meat which you are offered because that meat is dangerous. It is going to affect you. Now, what does the word of God say? I'm going to read. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 4. Concerning meat, which has been sacrificed to idols, what scripture says? Does it say people mustn't eat it? Listen to this. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 4. As therefore, Concerning 
Therefore, the eating of those things which are offered in sacrifice to marine spirits, let's put it that way, or to idols, and a marine spirit is an idol, let's put it that way. We know that a marine spirit is nothing in the world. So now, do you know what this guy is saying? He is saying marine spirits are very powerful. When you eat meat, they can change you. That is a lie from the pit of hell. This guy is lying. Thus says the word of God. I will read again. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 4. What does Enigma say? He says, if you go to a funeral, do not eat meat which is sacrificed to many marine spirits. What does the word of God say? Let's read. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 4. As concerning, therefore, the eating of those things that are offered in, in sacrifice to idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world, and that there is none other God but one. For though there be gods, blah, 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 but there is one God. Now, what is Paul saying? He is saying there is meat which is offered to spirits. So now this issue of spirits and meat, it didn't start in South Africa. Neither did it start with marine spirits. It started in communities in Ephesus, in Galatia, in Colossae, in, 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 in Thessalonica. What were they doing? They were eating meat which was sacrificed to idols. And then Paul says, he say, comes and says, it is nothing. He says, it is nothing. Why? He goes on to Romans chapter 14 verse 2. Let me read Romans 14 verse 2. Let me tell you about eating of meats offered to idols. Romans 14 verse 2. Romans chapter 14 verse 2. Don't be deceived by these liars. Him, okay, verse, Romans 14 verse 1. He who is weak in the faith receive, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believes that he may eat all things. That is the one who is strong. And another who is weak eats herbs. Why? I can't eat meat offered to marine spirits. What does he say in verse 3? Let not him that is weak despise. Let not him that eats despise him. When you read this story, you see that Paul is saying, weak brothers don't eat certain meat. Why? Because they are weak. And then he goes on to explain it in chapter 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We saw in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, where he says, an idol is nothing. And then when you look at Corinth, Corinth was a place which was infested with false brothers. They were selling meats offered to idols, and they were saying, I don't eat this, I don't eat. And then Paul comes, he corrects them. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 25. Listen. What does he say? Here in Romans chapter 14 verse 2, we see that a weak person doesn't eat meat because ah, I don't eat meat which has been offered to, 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 to the grandfathers. I want to put it this way. If you go to Zimbabwe, my country, not even Zimbabwe only, to India, cows are offered as grandfather or as their gods. In India, a, a cow is a god. They don't eat cow meat because they say it's our God. In Zimbabwe, there are cows which are sacrificed that this is grandfather, so and so. When that cow die, dies, they don't eat it. Now Paul is saying to the Corinthians, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 25, listen. 1 Corinthians 10, 25. Whatever Is sold in the marketplace. Eat 
asking no question for conscience sake. For the Lord, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He says, you mustn't eat meat at a funeral because it has been offered unto the idols. Why? Because you are talking of weak people who don't know the truth. Romans chapter 14 verse 2. A weak brother does not eat meat because it has been offered to idols. He is weak. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 25, he says, whatever is sold at the marketplace, eat without asking any question. Why? Because you know that everything belongs to God. Cows were created by God. They were not created by marine spirits. This guy is lying. This enigma guy, this mysterious guy, is lying to the people of South Africa. And all you people who claim to be followers of enigma, I want you to take your Bibles and I am going to show you the truth about this guy. This is part one. When we get to part two, we get to part three, we get to part four, you are going to understand the truth about this guy. Now I have shown you that this guy is saying, you must not eat meat because it has been offered to what? To marine spirits. And I have shown you that that is not true. I am just taking off the advance. Sorry for this. Let me put the volume down. Oh dear me, where is my volume key? Okay, let it continue. I, I can do without it. The entire customer experience. So now you heard him. He is saying, marine spirits have meat which can affect your body. And the Bible does not teach that. Now what I am going to do, I'll continue playing him until you understand the truth about this guy. That this guy is just one of those deceivers who is deceiving people who don't know the truth. Okay, I'm, I'm nearly there. I, I, I'm, I'm rewinding it. To, I, I, I'm forwarding it, sorry. Okay. This is completely digital. Even our elevators are connected. So now, so far, we have said, when you go to the butcher's shop and there is meat which is sold, you have a right to eat it. And he is saying you mustn't eat meat because you, you are going to be bewitched by marine spirits, which is false. So now, I want to continue playing, which I will do. Listen to this. Listen to this. What have we established? We have seen that this guy is saying, meat offered to marine spirits is dangerous. And then Paul says, idols are nothing. Eat without asking any questions. How does he put it to Timothy? Let me show you how he puts it to Timothy Paul about the same subject of eating meat. First Timothy chapter 4. We are talking about the scriptures, brothers and sisters, not about what these liars tell us. First Timothy 4 verse 4. Okay. <laughs> this is going to be explosive. He says, Now the Spirit, verse 1, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the last days some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Enigma is propagating devils' doctrine. Verse 2, speaking in lies, uh, speaking lies in hypocrisy. Having their conscience seared with a word, I am vestry, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats. He says, don't eat meat. Doctrine of demon, seducing spirit from enigma and Satan. Listen, which go, uh, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God is created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. People who believe this guy, one, they don't know the truth, two, they don't believe. 
Why this four? For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and the prayer. This takes us to another false prophet in Zimbabwe. Or another false apostle says, you mustn't pray for food. First Corinthians, First Timothy chapter 4 verse 5. Prayer and the word of God sanctifies food. So when you go to a funeral and this liar enigma says you mustn't eat meat, you are being robbed of good food. When I go to a funeral or when I go to a wedding or when I go anywhere and I am given food and meat, I say hallelujah Jehovah. Thank you for beef. Thank you for pork. Thank you for fish. Thank you for crab. Thank you for anything which is said before me. It is sanctified by prayer and the word of God. Hallelujah. And I eat. That is the word of God. Now this guy is propagating doctrines of devil, devils when he's telling you not to eat meat. When Paul says an idol is nothing, he is saying an idol is something. When God says an idol is nothing, this liar in enigma is saying an idol is dangerous. Who do you believe? Listen to this. People are kept in the marine kingdom. And here in the world, who died. who died in those families of the people who are? Sure. Mm -hmm. So I want you people to know that if you go to the funeral, don't always eat what you don't understand. You eat the food, you eat the meat of a cow that has been slaughtered there. Mm. Hence, you are eating something which is not real. Listen to what he's saying. He's contradicting the word of God. He says, if you are eating a cow, you are eating not something which is not real. What are you eating? The earth and everything in it belongs to God. Cows, meat belongs to God. Now, may I present to you guys that enigma is of the devil. He has got the spirit of the Antichrist. What is the spirit of the Antichrist? It opposes the word of God. We saw in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33, where the Bible says God is not the author of confusion. And what did he say? He says his God is the author of confusion. Do you want enigmas God or you want the God of the Bible? I want to call upon all of you who are following this confused guy, who are following this demonic guy, to repent. Thank you and amen. Maranatha, may God be with you all and may he cause his face to shine upon you. Amen.